Good afternoon and welcome to the Velo Ads YouTube channel. Here I am in the dry cycle, Mark 8, almost ready for production and uh, we're on the legendary Swains Lane, one of the steepest hills in London and uh, I remember the last dry cycle video I made, a lot of the comments were, I wonder what it's like on the hills, you know, uh, can it get up? So I thought we'll take it to the steepest hill in London and let's see how it performs. We've got some uh, power tuck pedals in and we've got the uh, the power meter on here so we'll see how much power we need to get up the hill and whether it makes it or not let's go okay so i'm in the bike uh just about ready to uh attack the hill um i've got stuart on an electric bike behind me so he can keep up with the other camera so hopefully you'll get some footage of this let's see how many watts we're going to end up doing going up here okay so i've got the bike in boost mode uh, I'm in gear three at the moment, uh, 100 kilos a bike, and we're going to see if we can make it to the top. Ready? Okay, let's go. It's really nice having a power, power meter in here. Okay, so we're hitting the steepest part on the hill where it gets to about 24%, I think it is. We're doing eight kilometers an hour in the dry cycle. And uh, this is the steepest bit. I used to get a bit of wheel, rear wheel spin here in my quest and my wow on the hill climb composition. Uh, I'm pushing 250 watts on the pedals and we're doing seven kilometers an hour. I've dropped down into second gear now. Oh. Okay, seven kilometers an hour which looks like that's about the limit at the moment. 344 watts, and now I'm in first gear. So I'm out of gears. We're in boost mode on the, uh, on the Bafang, 250 watts, 6.3 kilometers an hour, 256 watts, Wow, it's not too bad. This is steep. Wow, I'm amazed. <laughs> now it's easy. I'm changing up a gear. Still going up a steep bit. 215 watts, it's eight kilometers an hour now. My, my, my maximum watts, 344. 166 watts now, here we're starting to level out. Okay, we're near the top, I can't believe it. The dry cycle's made it up the, one of the steepest hills in London. Goodness me. Oh, sorry for the high pitched shriek there, but uh, yeah, amazing. Let's pull in here. Wow, okay, super cool. Woo! <laughs> I made it to the top, I can't believe it. Uh, maximum wattage up there, up Swain's Lane, was 344 watts, and uh, my average was about 250 watts up there, so. Anyone who knows about power and road bikes will know how much power I needed to go up there, which is a lot less than if I had to pedal just with human power. We would have been pushing a, uh, another 100 and something, maybe 200 watts up there in, the, in my Velomobile. But um, yeah, amazing. So we got up there, no problem. Average speed was about eight kilometers an hour, pretty much up, this, up the whole hill. And uh, I'm amazed that, you know, with an electric motor, you can shift, what is it, 120 kilos, I think this is, which we'll confirm with Andy on the way back down. And uh, we got up there, no problem. I started off with 90% at the bottom there to come up to climb up the hill. Uh, power on the on the battery for the e-assist. We've now got 85%. So 
so I've used 5% getting up Swain's Lane in boost mode. So not bad return actually. Maximum points for the dry cycle on that hill climb. I'm, I'm impressed now because I thought I would have to work a lot harder to get it up the hill and it was a, a doddle. So steepest hill in London, zero. Dry cycle, one. <laughs> now back. This should be interesting down the hills. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll film it on the way down. Okay. Oh, there's a car, there's a car coming up. Yeah, it's one way this way. Okay, so we're in the dry cycle and we're whizzing back round after my hill climb exploits and um, it feels a lot more refined than my last ride. Uh, oh, a great city machine, absolutely really really good. And we're going to go down um, Highgate Hill now which is a really <laughs> steep, oh goodness, let's Let's see how we go. Okay, 20 kilometers an hour already. Bloody hell. <laughs> I've never been down there. One of these. Okay, we're going fast now. Let's slow down a bit because this thing is heavy. And I don't know what it can do. <laughs> okay, 35 kilometers an hour. Brakes are really good actually. <laughs> Scary canary. Awesome. Wow. So downhill feels fine, the brakes inspire confidence, so I knew I could stop. 35 kilometers down there, you don't really have to do much. I'm in, what, gear 11, and uh, we're doing okay. We're whizzing back down the hill. It's all downhill now. I've done my hill climb and I'm really enjoying the downhill. Oh, 38 kilometers an hour. Car in the way, unfortunately. Straight on, Stuart. The seat, I, I've totally forgotten how comfortable the seat was. The seat's oh, very ergonomical. I've got seat belts as well here, which I, I, I didn't bother wearing. I should have maybe put them on on the downhill because I didn't know what to expect, but um, worked out awesome. So let's go and speak to Andy and find out what's happening with this machine and uh, when the first bike will be delivered. <laughs> right, we're going back up Swain's Lane now. The hill from hell. <laughs> what a way to spend the day in London, eh? Fantastic. It's funny, when you go over the speed bumps, if you lift one of the rear wheels completely off the tarmac, the pedal slips because uh, you've lost drive in that wheel. And then it, once it hits the floor, it grips again and you have resistance on the pedals. I wouldn't mind one of these just for London. It'd be perfect. So now it's time to speak to Andrew and uh, find out a little bit more about the dry cycle uh, for the viewers. That's cool. That is off scale brilliant. I'm in peace. You've got a <laughs> After my surprisingly pleasant climb in the dry cycle up Swains Lane, I'm now here with Andrew Murphy, who is the creator of the dry cycle, and I'm uh, just going to ask him a few questions about the machine and upgrades and stuff that he's done since the last time I saw the machine, and it's almost ready for production. And so we'll have a little chat with Andrew and uh, see what progress he's made with the machine. And here we Hi are. Hi, Andrew. Good to see you. Excellent. I'm Andy Murphy. I'm from Dry School Limited. Um, so this is our Mark 8 tricycle and uh, this is almost production ready. We're, we're pretty much at the production stage now. We've got our first 10 frames that have already been made um, and we're starting to assemble those now in our Bedford factory. 
Uh, this one has got all brand new moulds, uh, so we've gone for aluminium vacuum form moulds and so all of the panels are a lot more finished now than they were in the last video when I was showing you. We've got washer jets on the front, uh, we've still got our heated wing mirrors, uh, we've also extended those wing mirrors ever so slightly so you get a better view from behind. Uh, we have had it endurance tested at Millbrook, uh, so it's done about 700 kilometres over rough surfaces in Millbrook, uh, which is the equivalent of about 20,000 miles. Uh, as an accelerated test of about 20,000 miles in real world. And yeah, we've, we've obviously done another round of crash testing as well at Millbrook since the last time I was on, on John Williams' channel here. Was the video uh, on your on your channel, uh, the yeah. crash testing? Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to go and check that out. On uh, your website, you can, sorry. You can see them uh, getting crash tested at 31 miles an hour, uh, both as a side impact and uh, a front impact as well. We're now into production and uh, we've got 10 frames, as I say, being made at the moment. And if you'd like to buy one of the first tricycles, uh, you won't get the very first, but uh, you can get onto our website site which is www.drycycle.co.uk and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Fantastic. Thank you We've got heated mirrors on both sides and uh, the switch for that is just on the dashboard here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also got a 12 volt cigarette socket in case you want to provide any power through that. Uh, this is one of the uh, sound uh, the sensors for the alarm system. Uh, you've got the indicator for the right indicator just as a dashboard indicator light. You can obviously mount a phone in the middle here. You've got the two heaters uh, which you can either put onto heat or you can put onto fan. And if I turned on the vehicle that would actually do something. So you can possibly just about hear it now. Um, We've got two of those. This is the alarm light. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, handles for, for grabbing and getting in and out or mounting a cup holder or a phone or whatever you want to do. Uh, Shimano computer in the middle here, uh, under the Shimano computer, which I probably should have dragged up after we moved it for filming. Um, there is the on off switch in the middle. Uh, this is the high low beam and this is the main beam indicator dashboard lights. Uh, and then on the other side there's actually a blanking panel on this one because we didn't fit it but that's where the uh, heated seat switch goes. Uh, and then you have a double USB socket on that side as well as then another sa alarm sensor. Mm -hmm. So that's the dashboard fairly well covered. Fantastic. And anything we need to know about on the steerer? So on this handlebar you've got the uh, squirter, which I shouldn't press with the canopy open because you will spray yourself in the face if you do that. Uh, you've got uh, the gear selector, which is the DI2 electronic gear shifting. You just press the button and it, it shifted through the gears quite nicely. Uh, heated handlebars, so this is the switch that's fairly easy to do inadvertently sometimes if, <laughs> if you don't know it's there. But uh, yeah, that's how you heat up the handlebars. Uh, obviously the brakes uh, with parking brake function on it. So if I just pull that properly, there we go. Oh, that was the horn. <laughs> um, so the horn's on this side, which is this one, and then you've also got the high beams. Sorry, I've got them the wrong way around. That's, that's the horn, that's the high beams. Mm -hmm. And then right and left indicators. Perfect. Okay, other side. Okay, so on the left-hand side here, you have got a bell at the top. Uh, you've got the main light switch to turn the lights on and off. You've got the uh, selector for selecting through the various different modes on the Shimano motor system. Another heated handlebar and another parking brake on this side as well. Um, and then this lever here uh, is actually the reverse lever, which defaults to forwards. Uh, but if you press and hold it down, is reversed. Uh, if you hold it in the middle is neutral and if you want to when you've got it in the middle setting you can just lock it into that position uh, because that allows you to do easy maintenance if ever you need to but it also means that when you stop at the traffic lights if you're in a high gear and you want to get down to a lower gear you just put it into neutral pedal away change on the Shimano gear system and you can set off in a lower gear once you've dropped it back into forwards and what's in this box here uh, so this is the uh, washer fluid underneath here, which you can obviously access from the top already. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the motor is just underneath in the middle. Yep. And uh, that's a 250 watt motor? Yes, yeah, it's 250 watt. It's the Shimano E8000 system that's uh, what we're running on them. So on the seat, of course, you've got a four point harness here, uh, which is obviously adjustable to suit the rider. Uh, the seat itself slides backwards and forwards quite readily, just with a normal automotive seat slider here. On the back of the seat, uh, if you come round to the back here, you'll notice that there is a handle on the back, uh, which then allows the seat to slide forward. Oh, can I see the handle again? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, and I should disconnect those. So that's the handle on the back, just to, to pull oh. the seat forward. And it's just a matter of disconnecting these with the little clips before you Brilliant. then pull the seat forward. Wow, there's a fair old boot there. It is a decent size, yes. Yeah, and that's obviously the battery. Yes, yeah, so we've got the two Shimano batteries. They're both 500 watt hour batteries. 
Um, so one of them is plugged into the motor at all times. When you need to swap them across, you just swap between the two batteries and swap mm -hmm. them into the, the other carrier. Um, okay, is it easy to... Easy to, to remove and swap over. This is actually missing the locking mechanism, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll do it the, the manual way, but... Uh, oh, that's, wow, that's pretty straightforward. That's how you swap them over. So these are the electronic locks that are on the tricycle. Um, these obviously have to be electronic because it's got a key fob, so you need to be able to operate them remotely. Uh, and one of the other thing about our locks is that they have this sliding mechanism so that you can open and close the canopy slightly uh, to just to let the air flow through or, or not flow through quite so much, uh, depending on how much mm. air and, and ventilation you need, really. So if you're going to tilt a tricycle onto its back, the first thing you need to do is just remove these covers on the back. Uh, so they're just held in place with this uh, dual lock tape. Uh, what you then find is, well, we have got a little thumb hold so you can get to it easily. Uh, underneath here, you've got the charge socket as well, by the way, uh, for the 12 volt uh, power systems. Oh, brilliant. Uh, so you just remove that little bung and plug in a charger mm -hmm. and that's how you charge the 12 volt battery on it. Okay. Uh, the Shimano batteries, you plug it directly into the batteries themselves and that's how you charge the Shimano ones. Or of course you can remove the Shimano batteries and charge them wherever you'd like to charge them. Okay. Uh, going back to these little legs, so these just screw into the back here and uh, we've put a little nut on the end of them so you can tighten them to the end of the nut there so you get them to the same depth on both sides mm -hmm. and once those are in place you can then tilt it on its back. Sure, you're a lot more graceful than I am getting it. <laughs> I've had a bit of practice. Yes. I use my little pockets inside to put the key in as well. They're really handy, the cubby holes there. Awesome. Right, let's, let's tilt it on its back. Yeah. Brilliant, <laughs> wow. There's a little bit of weight to it. Yeah. Cool. Now we can see, oh, this is really good. Oh, it's just um, let's go over some of the drivetrain and steering mechanism here. It's okay. just really nice to be able to see it all. Now we're cooking on gas. Wow, look at the ball joints here. What batteries are you using here? Uh, these are Lifos 68 ampere hour batteries. Okay. Uh, they're, they're 784 watt hours I think, mm -hmm. 12 volts each, uh, so if you have two of them it's, it's a little over one and a half kilowatt hours. Okay. One comes as standard, the second one is optional. Lovely, and is there anything you want, do you want to start up here and just anything of interest? Um, okay, so it's aluminium frame of course, so uh, it's not going to rust or have any problems at all like that. Mm -hmm. It's all uh, stainless steel bolts and uh, UK branded bearings, and so it's all good quality uh, uh, kit. Um, you have the central steering pivot here. Uh, you can change the length of the threaded rods here so you can adjust the tracking and bits and pieces like that if ever you need to. Um, there is uh, the, yeah, the, the, the steering obviously comes down to this point here and then coming down you have the gearbox here. Uh, you can access to put oil into the gearbox or drain the oil from the gearbox quite easily on these two How points. How often do you have to change the oil in the gearbox? Uh, or recommend? I, I never have, mm -hmm. um, but we're recommending every 5,000 miles or so. Okay. Um, it's not something you need to do terribly often at all really. Mm -hmm. um, so that's obviously got the uh, the, the, the cassette, I should say, uh, on the input shaft. 
uh, with the, the DI2 derailleur linked onto it. Uh, we've got the derailleur hanger just here. Uh, this is adjustable both in length and, and sideways and up and down, mm -hmm. uh, so you can get a, a, a good seating for the derailleur onto it. Um, this is how the, the gear selects between reverse and neutral and forward. Um, and we have at all points our chain being tensioned uh, mm -hmm. with, with chain tensioners uh, to make sure that as your chain lengthens over time, of course, as you'd be well aware, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you, you don't have to worry about trying to tension the chain at all. It does it automatically whilst you're going down the road. We've got the differential at the back in the middle. So that splits the power between the two sides on the rear axle. Uh, it's an open differential. Uh, so it does mean that if you lose traction, it's going to spin it away on the other side uh, But uh, you probably have found that it doesn't actually cause problems as you're going up the road terribly much I mean if it was an off-road machine that would mm -hmm. not be ideal mm -hmm. uh, But for being a, a, a vehicle for getting around town, it's absolutely fine mm -hmm. uh, We have obviously the brake discs on both sides uh, Which are hydraulically activated as well uh, So they give you a lot of good stopping power certainly Fantastic Oh, that's absolutely amazing and uh, I don't think I, I had the, this view underneath the last time we saw the bike so um, that's really opened my eyes to actually how much work you've put into the machine and um, yeah it's a, definitely a feat of engineering Andrew well done thank you yeah fantastic it. Uh, so at the top here it's just a couple of access panels um, this is so that you can reach into the, uh, the middle of the vehicle uh, if you need to whilst the vehicle is resting on its back. It's just another way to get into that spot. Um, and you can, if you want to, take them off and get a bit more airflow during the summer and things like that. Oh, okay, yeah. You can also fully remove the canopy. Um, Go so. Cabrio. Fantastic. Yes, exactly. Oh, brilliant. And um, a couple more questions. Uh, how long till the first uh, dry cycle is available for your first customer? Uh, so it'll be ready in the middle of May, the first one for the first customers, and uh, we're just waiting on the plastic. That's the only thing we're lacking in stock, everything else we've already got. How long is the waiting list from, from ordering? Uh, once you order one, how long do you have to wait for a dry cycle? Right, so at the moment the waiting list is about 8 to 10 weeks. Oh, not too um, bad. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. So uh, you'll, you'll join the back of the queue. It's not a terribly long queue at the moment. We haven't been spending too much time advertising at the moment mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's a limited production run vehicle. It's a okay. niche vehicle. It was always going to be a niche vehicle. Yeah, uh, We're not churning them out in their thousands. Okay, so eight to ten weeks. Uh, the retail price on the dry school is £14,995. Uh, okay. That is without options and there are some options that you can add in if, if you'd like to uh, get even more comfort into your vehicle. Okay, and the uh, website address, just one more time. Uh, website address is www.drycycle.co.uk. Legally use it anywhere you would use a normal pedal cycle or bicycle. Um, so that means you can use it on cycle tracks, you can use it on the road, uh, you don't need to have license, you don't need to have tax, and you don't need to have insurance. Uh, you can have insurance if you'd like to have insurance and mm -hmm. with the value of the vehicle that could be understandable. Um, but you can have it with an alarm system and also a GPS tracker as well as an option extra if you'd like to and uh, so you can secure it quite well as well. Big thank you to Andrew Murphy from Dricycle for bringing the machine down and uh, letting me have a, a ride in it and thoroughly enjoying it. So yeah, um, if you're interested in one, have a chat with Andrew and uh, place your order. There's only an 8 to 10 week waiting list for one and uh, it's looking pretty good now and it rode superbly so win-win with the dry cycle. Thanks, Thanks again you. Andrew for coming down Cheers and letting me have a try. Thanks. Thanks awesome, Velo ads out. Good morning, welcome to the future.